We thank God for her. She's a, been a great example to me and to my siblings. And I always say, because it's from her that I learned that it is compulsory that women should, mothers should pray for their children. Mothers never fail pray for your children, especially for your sons. Because we sons, we don't know how to pray. We learn how to pray later on in life, after we have gone through so many things. That is when we learn. So the prayers that keep us alive at that time is the prayers of our mothers. So mothers, never cease to pray for your children, especially for your sons. And the Lord will continue to help us in Jesus' name. For the fathers, we know that the fathers never fail to bless your wives and your children. Because even in the Bible, we see it is the blessings of the Father that God always honors. So let us continue to pray our Lord and be a good example, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I'm here today, and I would like to thank the Reverend for the opportunity. He didn't even know my mother was around. The same way, the last time my father was here, he didn't know. But the Spirit always touches him to put me in front of them so that I cannot lie. I can only say the truth. Because anyone I say, my mother will be here to ask. You can ask her and know if I'm saying the truth or not. And the Lord will help us so that the words that I will speak today will be the words of the Lord and not my words in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, let whatever is said today, for the Bible students, those who know the Bible, you have noticed that there was a mistake that I made in the bulletin. There's no Psalm 190. It was supposed to be Psalm 130. And I put Psalm 190. But as I said, the Spirit led the Reverend to do the writing, and the Lord continued to bless him in Jesus' name. We will look at Psalm 130 and other verses that were there today. It's a powerful psalm, a wonderful psalm, and it's a psalm that I would like all of us to say in pass as we go through this sermon today. It will inspire us to know why we are Christians and also to teach us to humble ourselves. I don't know if it's on the projector, but the first four verses, if we can read the first four verses together. So Psalm 131 verse 1, let's say it together. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. Verse 2, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Verse 3, If you, Lord, should keep account of our sins and treat us accordingly, O Lord, who can stand? And verse 4, But there is forgiveness with you, that you may be feared and worshipped. This psalm is a cry for help, a cry to our Lord, to be merciful. We all are Christians and we all know that we were all sinners. And as sinners, we are fallen short of the glory of God and we have repented. Also, we say we have repented. But we have to understand that even as we, it's easy to say, but have we truly repented? One of the things that keeps Christians, human beings, people, from true repentance or from truly saying sorry is pride. You won't know it, but sinful pride. It keeps us sometimes, even when we're in a situation, for crying out for help to the Lord. If I was to ask, what do you say repentance is? Do you say repentance is just simply say, uh, I am sorry for my sin, and tomorrow you do it again, or just saying I'm sorry? Or is repentance being sorry enough to say that sorry, I will not do it again or sorry, I will come out of that place or sorry, I will not go there again or sorry, I will make efforts to stop that sin even with as parents, if your child does something and he does say, yeah, daddy, I'm sorry you say, you're not, you, you, you will say, you're not sorry, you're just saying it so that uh, you escape 
But if the same child comes to you and says, Ah, Daddy, I'm sorry, I will not do it again. In fact, that person is no more my friend because of this. You, even as a parent, know that the child has truly repented and is going to make an effort to change his or her ways. So this is true repentance. And but what keeps us from doing this true repentance? Sometimes it's pride, sometimes it's influences, sometimes in the society, the world, it's never really, it's not too easy because it's actually our nature to be simple. Even when, take for example, right from Adam and Eve, when God was with me, where are you? He was the same way he responded to God, somebody that was with me. But they were proud already. They were not sorry. They said, I thought I was naked. They didn't even start with sorry. I would like to give a little bit an example of, uh, let me say, using this psalm and the story on how we can be, we can move towards repentance or what happens when someone says, out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. There was this young man, let me say, let me name him Tutu. So Tutu, he had an argument with him, let's say his parents, or even if you say with God. And what was the argument about? His parents, his pastor, God, the spirits had told him, you see this road, don't go there. It is dangerous. That road is dangerous. There's a pit there. He will say, but others are going there. They are making it. The other road is too bumpy. That road is smooth. He says, don't go there. You know, even for us, you don't know what you're talking about. And he now goes out. So he took along the road, he went there. Now he sees different, different roads. Different places moving to different directions. One road is marked safe, signed by God, signed by Jesus Christ. Another one, the other road signed by other people. But there's that dangerous road. And that dangerous road is actually written in the signboard there. Danger. Pits ahead. It's there. And that signboard, you know how we sign our signboard sometimes by police. Even there, it was signed again. Danger. Pits ahead. Signed by God. Signed by the law. Signed by pastor. Signed by imam. Signed by even everybody signed that this road is a dangerous road. But, as you say, I saw people, they say that's the road, somebody who said that's the road, that's, that don't mind them, they're not saying that thing, that there's no, nothing will happen, can't you see all of them? He now, he took now followed that road. If I to use parallel language, lo and behold, he fell inside the pit. So when he fell inside the pit, as he, he, there are three things that could happen to him as he fell inside the pit. When he falls inside the pit, or falling, he could die. And when he's dead, there's no mercy, there's no redemption, there's no things to even do. These are things that could happen when we don't follow the way of Christ. Another thing, he could fall inside that pit and break his leg or hang himself. He will be in pain in the pit. Another thing, he could fall, nothing will happen to him, but he's trapped in that pit. You are there trapped. Now, we would all assume that uh, because sometimes when it doesn't concern us or we don't look in our life, we think that, ah, as you put inside the the first thing to say is to start shouting for help. <laughs> in real life, sometimes it's not like that. As you fall inside the pit, first of all, you will try, because you know you disobey. You will try and come out of that pit with your own power. You will struggle, struggle, struggle to come out of that pit. That's the way we sometimes, when we know that what we did was not right with God, and we are coming to this problem, we try with our own power to come out. It's still pride that will make us, that will try first with our own strength to come out. When you see that, even with your own strength, you're digging yourself deeper and deeper into that pit. The next line of action for some people, it can surprise you, and it might not surprise you, because some of us are like that. Because of pride, you will say, it's better I stay here than go and look for help from those who are offended. It's better 
I'm not going to ask anybody for help. How come? After I've been in this thing, they will come and be laughing at me. You stay in peace. You don't cry for help. You say, ah, no, I don't need it. I will still struggle. And you stay there. And stay there forever. Why another person? What would he say? He will say, ah, if I cry for help, they will forgive me now. No, I know how I insulted them. I know how I said all kinds of things to them. They won't even, if I cry, they will hear my cry and they won't even bother. So why should I even shout out? Why should I call for help? Another person, as you have tried and you see and you know that your father is a forgiving father, as we saw, that he is a forgiving and merciful father, you will cry out for help. You will cry out for help from the Lord, knowing that no matter what you've done, no matter how you have been backslidden, no matter how you have left where he sent you to, he will save you. Or he will hear your cry and you cry out. There's still a fourth group of people. There are some people in this world, even amongst us in our daily lives, who fall into this pit and as they fall, they are blinded. And as they are blinded, they don't even know they're in the pit. People are in the pit and you don't even know they're in the pit. You are suffering, you are disconnected from God, and you don't even know you are like that. And that is the majority. We don't know. Many of us, I, or many people who are not saved, or who don't even believe, are in the pit and don't even know they're in the pit. They are moving around, blinded by the darkness. And if you're blinded and you don't know you're in the trouble, or you don't know you're in the pit, how do you cry out for help? So we thank God, you should thank God that the Lord has sought you out and shown you and told you that your father is a forgiving father. So that when you fall into any pit, physical, spiritual, people, small room, even as soon as you're falling, you're already crying out, Jesus! You should hear me and come and save you. So we will cry out in Jesus' name whenever we fall into and Sometimes it's not our fault. Sometimes, because as Christians, you have enemies. There are many people into the, in the Bible that were thrown into pits. Jeremiah was thrown into a pit and almost died. Daniel was thrown into his own was even worse. There were lions that were his day was dead. Others were thrown into fire. So the enemy could have thrown you dead. And sometimes you are afraid to cry out, thinking it's the enemy that will hear. And come again to maybe dig to cover the pits now. But don't be afraid. The Lord is mighty and he will fight our battles for us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, that was read. Okay, yes. In verse 4, in verse 3, why we should know that our God is a very merciful God is that we all know what we have done. Even, even the child knows that when he has done something wrong the first time, mommy and daddy might forgive him. Done something the second time, mommy and daddy might forgive him. By the third time, he will receive the punishment of all the ones he has done in the past. Full quota. Everything. It might even be that third one, he might have even done the smallest one. But all the past ones will be finished on your body that day. But we have a God who does not record our sins against us. And we should be thankful for that. So once you keep in mind, He has not recorded, he's, he's, not, he's merciful, He's waiting for us. We that are even say He's merciful with you. Because if the Lord was punishing man according to our sins, no one can sign. And that is why He said, because He doesn't do that, we should fear Him. We should fear Him. That He doesn't keep account and treats you accordingly. So we should fear Him. First John 1 John 1.8 says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
He is faithful. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, especially to us who are saved, I would like us to look at that efficiency that was there today. If you look at verse 28, verse 28 says, The thief who has now become a believer, when we say thief, it's not only those who steal. In Nigeria, we know what thief is. <laughs> we know who are thieves. I don't need to mention them here. Even in our places of work, some of us will wear suit and tie, don't really thief. We that have businesses, we know what is going on under the businesses. Will we say they are not thieves? What is going on behind? When you catch the person, if you are calling police for the person, what is that person? You too that did it. If you are, if what you did, they have to call police, call elders, call people, get you sat. What are you? The corporate thief. <laughs> so the thief who has now become a believer, who has repented, must no longer steal, but instead he must work hard. That is make an honest living producing that which is good with his own hands so that he will have some to share with those in need. So please, even in our place of work, in our business is where we receive the highest number of temptation, let us try. Let us pray for the Lord to help us. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to keep the temptation away from us. Do not let unwholesome words ever come out from your mouth but only speech as is good for building up others. Speak good words according to the need and the occasion, so that it is, will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. I like our elderly people here, our fathers here. There are some fathers that when you speak, every time it cuts your heart. But the fathers here have really encouraged me. I've encouraged the minister, I've encouraged I've seen them encouraging words. It's good. There's some places because women can talk and you would know that it's either out of annoyance, out of maybe something was wrong or something. But if a man speaks a harmful word, it cuts deep and it is unbecoming of Christians. So please, let us be careful what we say if we have truly repented. Let us read the second part of that verse. Uh, we from verse five to seven. Verse five says, "We can read it together." I wait for the Lord; my soul waits, and in His hope, in, in, uh, sorry, and in His word do I hope. Verse six: My soul waits for the Lord. More than the watchman men for the morning. It's more than the watchman for the morning. Verse 7. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For the Lord, for with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption. That verse 7 replace Israel with your name. O Chukudi, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is loving kindness. And with him is abundance redemption. If I to go back to that story, why Muntuk has now cried out for help from the Lord. He has cried, and then God sent his son to come and save him. And God or Jesus comes and looks in the pit and sees him and tells Muntuk, Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. My father said I should tell you that nothing is all forgotten. We are coming for what you have to do for me. I will do everything to save you from this pit, but I have to go and get the things. Just wait for me. Put your hope in me that I am coming back for you. Wait, wait, I am coming. Your sins are forgiven. I have spoken to you now inside that pit. Wait for me. I am coming back. Have hope, have faith. I believe in me that I am coming back. Don't call to any other person. I am coming back. Which one would you be? Would you be the one that would wait? It's not easy. He's in the pit. It's a big pit. That pit. After some time, maybe he doesn't know how long he's going to wait. 
because Jesus did not tell him how long. He just told him, your sins are forgiven. So you know that, oh yes, I have cried, my voice has been heard, I have been forgiven, they are coming. When they are coming, I don't know, but I know they are coming. You wait patient. Some won't wait, some of us won't wait, some of us would, after the first day, you now see that, ah, I wanted this thing now, 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 now. This other guy, when he prayed, his miracle happened instantly. Why is my own not, uh, my own is delaying now? Start crying out for other people. Start crying out again. And the sad thing is, that's what the devil wants. The devil saw maybe he was coming already to that place to cover his. Jesus was now coming. He saw Jesus, he took off and hit one corner. Jesus has spoken to you. He said, ah, uh, this one, I've missed him now. And as the devil wants to go, the next thing he now hears him crying again. I said, like, hey, I didn't miss him. He's still in the peace. And you know, when you're suffering or when you're in a situation, that is when all kinds of funny, funny advice will come to you. The devil will show up, make sure of the any form, and then say, ah, oh, gross, oh, you're still in that peace. I don't, I saw him, you know, he was going to talk to another person. You know. uh, before he will come back, he will be one year old, be year old. No, 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 no. Let me help you out. And you will forget that Jesus said, wait and hope and believe in only me. And then the devil will now throw you down one old rope. As you are climbing the rope, the rope will break and fall back down. You were not caught in the pit, but now as you are climbing and fall, you get hot in the pit. The situation gets worse. Or the devil will help you out. You even help me out of the pit. And out of the pit, you think, I'm here, I'm out, I'm seeing daylight. Only for you to realize that when you reach there, the devil has to go and say, oh, empty your pockets, empty your pockets. Mm-hmm. You empty your pockets, he takes what he gave you, he gave you out, but he takes everything you own, everything of you. And if that on his at his discretion, he could give you outside, or he could push you back inside the pit, or he could even kill you. That will never be our portion in Jesus' name. We shall wait for the Lord, and the Lord will come back and rescue us. Because when Jesus comes back, when Jesus comes back and sees that you waited for him, it will be a great thing. It will be a wonderful thing. And you know, when you're in that place, that's why he said that the watchman waits for the morning. He's waiting for the morning, he's in the night. You know in the night you hear all kinds of noises. Once morning comes, Relax. In that place, in that strife, in that sin, in that problem, you keep seeking for the Lord, waiting for the Lord, praying to the Lord, keep praying for a solution, the Lord will come. Because your hope is in Him and He is loving and kind with abundant redemption. Put the last verse. Verse 8, let us see what happens when Jesus comes back. And in verse 8, it says, And he will redeem Israel from all his sins. Let us put our name there. And he will redeem Israel from all his sins. And he will redeem all of us from all our sins in Jesus' name. He will redeem all of us from all our problems in Jesus' name. He will redeem our children, our parents, our businesses, our work, our strife in Jesus' name. When Jesus finally comes back, to me it's going to be a bit. He comes with a golden ladder for the guy. As he puts it in the pit, the ladder is sized exactly for him. He took clients out of the pit and is happy that he's out of the pit. Lo and behold, when he comes out, he sees that Jesus has already prepared a path for him to walk past. After he parts, Jesus has now prepared a banquet, a feast for him to eat. That my son, I know you are dirty, I'll wash away all your sins. I know you are hungry, I will feed you and close you. Jesus has prepared all these things for him. Jesus even gives him the gift of the Holy Spirit, gives him the gift of protection, and says, this will guide you so that you do not fall into other pits around. 
How wonderful it is. How great it is. And the Lord will save us. In 1 Peter 1, 18, it says, 18-21, it says, For you know that it is not with perishable things, such as silver and gold, that you are redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you by from your forefathers. But with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, he was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these time, last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. So your faith and hope are in God. Our faith and hope is in God. The Lord has redeemed us and will continue to save us from all situations in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us just wait and hope and have faith and belief in Him that He will save us. Let us win because anybody in Nigeria right now, we are all in the pit whether we like it or not. You just need to put on the news to know that you are in the pit. Some of us can't even watch the news. Mothers, I saw in fact, I don't even want to think what those who their children are kidnapped are going through. We're all in this serious pit. But we, and we, we as a nation even cried out to the wrong person. They cried out, and I told you, as you come out from the pit, they will rob you. They rob us. There's so many places in the Bible. And they're still robbing us. They're still robbing us. All of us. But we should continue to have faith and hope in the Lord. We as Christians, our kingdom is not this earthly kingdom, but the heavenly kingdom. And the Lord promised to clothe you. He will continue to clothe you no matter what is going on around you in Jesus' name. Amen. He will continue to provide for you and your children in Jesus' name. Amen. No matter what is going on, we shall educate our children. And our children will not come out tainted. They shall come out blessed. All we have to do, both of us who are the children, and we who are the parents, and those who are the ministers, those who are the leaders, should continue to pray and cry out for help. Cry out. As we can see in this psalm, the Lord is merciful. He is merciful. That's why we're here. He is merciful. Other nations, where they are blinded, and in the pits, and blinded, and don't know. Some mercy was not shown to them in some instances, and a lot of people died. It came here and people died. We all know what 2020 and 2021 was like. But for, so it should have taught all of us that every day it preach. It's a blessing. It's a blessing that the Lord has already answered your prayer for that day. And the Lord will continue to answer our prayers in Jesus' name. So in conclusion, the road to redemption is simple. We cry to the Lord for forgiveness. We wait and put our hope in the Lord. We believe and the Lord will redeem us. And we are redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen.